Kohen or Kohen or Kohen, Hebrew, Kohen Kohen, priest, place. Kohanim Kohanim, priests, is the Hebrew word for priest, used in reference to the Aaronic priesthood. Levitical priests or Kohanim are traditionally believed and halakhically required to be of direct patrilineal descent from the biblical Aaron, also Aharon, brother of Moses. During the existence of the Temple in Jerusalem, Kohanim performed the daily and holiday Yom Tov duties of sacrificial offerings. Today, Kohanim retain a lesser though distinct status within Rabbinic and Karaite Judaism, and are bound by additional restrictions according to Orthodox Judaism. In the Samaritan community, the Kohanim have remained the primary religious leaders. Ethiopian Jewish religious leaders are sometimes called Kayan, a form of the same word, but the position is not hereditary and their duties are more like those of rabbis than Kohanim in most Jewish communities. Topic. Meaning and etymology The noun Kohen is used in the Torah to refer to priests, whether Jewish or pagan, such as the Kohanim priests. Of Baal, 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 19, or Dagon, though Christian priests are referred to in Hebrew by the term Komer. Kohanim can also refer to the Jewish nation as a whole, as in Exodus chapter 19 verse 6, part of the Parsath Yithro, where the whole of Israel is addressed as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The word derives from a Semitic root common at least to the central Semitic languages. The cognate Arabic word Khan Kahan means soothsayer, augur, or priest. Translations in the paraphrase of the Aramaic Targumic interpretations include friend in Targum Yonathan to 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 11, master in Targum to Amos chapter 7 verse 10, and minister in Mechelta to Parsha Jethro Exodus chapter 18 verse 1 minus 20 to 23. As a starkly different translation the title worker, Rashi on Exodus chapter 29 verse 30 and Servant, Targum to Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 7, have been offered as a translation as well. Topic: <inaudible> Biblical origins. The status of priest Cohen was conferred on Aaron, the brother of Moses, and his sons as an everlasting covenant or a covenant of salt. During the forty years of wandering in the wilderness and until the Holy Temple was built in Jerusalem, the priests performed their priestly service in the portable tabernacle, Numbers chapter 1 verses 47 to 54, Numbers chapter 3 verses 5 to 13, Numbers chapter 3 verses 44 to 51, Numbers chapter 8 verses 5 to 26 Their duties involved offering the daily and Jewish holiday sacrifices, and blessing the people in a priestly blessing, later also known as Nisiat Kapiyam raising of the hands." In a broader sense, since Aaron was a descendant of the tribe of Levi, priests are sometimes included in the term Levites, by direct patrilineal descent. However, not all Levites are priests. When the temple existed, most sacrifices and offerings could only be conducted by priests. Non-priest Levites i.e. all those who descended from Levi, the son of Jacob, but not from Aaron performed a variety of other temple roles, including ritual slaughter of animals, song service by use of voice and musical instruments, and various tasks in assisting the priests in performing their service. Topic. Torah law The Torah mentions Melchizedek king of Salem, identified by Rashi as being Shem the son of Noah, as a priest. Cohen to El Elyon, the supreme god, Genesis chapter 14 verse 18. The second is Potiphera, priest of Heliopolis, then Jethro, priest of Midian, both pagan priests of their era. When Esau sold the birthright of the firstborn to Jacob, Rashi explains that the priesthood was sold along with it because by right the priesthood belongs to the firstborn. Only when the firstborn along with the rest of Israel sinned in the incident of the golden calf, the priesthood was given to the tribe of Levi, which had not been tainted by this incident. Moses was supposed to receive the priesthood along with the leadership of the Jewish people, but when he argued with God that he should not be the leader, God then chose Aaron as the recipient of the priesthood. Aaron received the priesthood along with his children and any descendants that would be born subsequently. However, his grandson Phinehas had already been born, and did not receive the priesthood until he killed the prince of the tribe of Simeon and the princess of the Midianites Numbers chapter 25 verses 7 to 13. Thereafter, the priesthood has remained with the descendants of Aaron. Topic. High priest 
In every generation when the temple was standing, one Kohen would be singled out to perform the functions of the high priest Hebrew Kohen Gadol. His primary task was the Day of Atonement service. Another unique task of the high priest was the offering of a daily meal sacrifice. He also held the prerogative to supersede any priest and offer any offering he chose. Although the Torah retains a procedure to select a high priest when needed, in the absence of the temple in Jerusalem, there is no high priest in Judaism today. 24 Kohanic divisions King David assigned each of the 24 priestly clans to a weekly watch during which its members were responsible for maintaining the schedule of offerings at the temple in Jerusalem, in accordance with 1 Chronicles 24-3-5. Prior to that time, the priestly courses numbered a mere eight. This newly instated a cycle of priestly courses, or priestly divisions, which repeated itself roughly twice each year. When the first and second temples were built, the priests of Aaron's lineage assumed these roles in the temple in Jerusalem. Each of the twenty-four groups consisted of six priestly families, with each of the six serving one day of the week. On the Sabbath day, all six worked in tandem. According to later rabbinical interpretation, these 24 groups changed every Sabbath at the completion of the Musaf service. However, on the biblical festivals all 24 were present in the temple for duty. According to the Jerusalem Talmud Ta'anith 4-2, 20a, four wards came up out of exile, Yediah, Haram, Pasher and Amur. The prophets among them had made a stipulation with them, namely, that even if Jehoiarev should come up out of exile, the officiating ward that serves in the temple at that time should not be rejected on his account, but rather, he is to become secondary unto them. <laughs> Destruction of the Second Temple Following the temple's destruction at the end of the First Jewish Revolt and the displacement to the Galilee of the bulk of the remaining Jewish population in Judea at the end of the Bar Kokhva Revolt, Jewish tradition in the Talmud and poems from the period record that the descendants of each priestly watch established a separate residential seat in towns and villages of the Galilee, and maintained this residential pattern for at least several centuries in anticipation of the reconstruction of the temple and reinstitution of the cycle of priestly courses. Specifically, this Kohanic settlement region stretched from the Beit Netofa Valley, through the Nazareth region to Arbel and the vicinity of Tiberias. In subsequent years, there was a custom of publicly recalling every Sabbath in the synagogues the courses of the priests, a practice that reinforced the prestige of the priests' lineage. Professor Yosef Tobi, describing a stone inscription found in Yemen and which contains a partial list of the names in Hebrew of the 24 priestly courses and their places of residence, writes, As for the probable strong spiritual attachment held by the Jews of Himyar for the land of Israel, this is also attested to by an inscription bearing the names of the Mesmeret priestly wards which was initially discovered in September 1970 by W. Muller and then, independently, by P. Gerjaznevich within a mosque in Beit al-Hadir, a village situated near Tanim, east of San. This inscription has been published by several European scholars, but the seminal study was carried out by E. E. Erbach 1973, one of the most important scholars of rabbinic literature in the previous generation. It should be noted that the priestly wards were seen as one of the most distinctive elements in the collective memory of the Jewish people as a nation during the period of Roman and Byzantine rule in the land of Israel following the destruction of the Second Temple, insofar as they came to symbolize Jewish worship within the land. It is now uncertain when this stone inscription was first engraved, but certainly it dates back to a time near the Second Temple's destruction. The complete list of sacerdotal names would normally have included 24 priestly wards. However, today, the stone inscription contains only a partial list of their names, with their former places of residence, beginning from the 4th Ward, and ending with the 14th Ward. This was because the stone had been partially broken away, as also part of which was hidden underground. This is the longest roster of names of this kind ever discovered unto this day. Topic. Mishnah and Talmud Topic. Qualifications and disqualifications Although Kohanim may assume their duties once they reached physical maturity, the fraternity of Kohanim generally would not allow young Kohanim to begin service until they reached the age of 20, and some opinions state that this age was 30. There was no mandatory retirement age. 
Only when a Kohen became physically infirm could he no longer serve. A Kohen may become disqualified from performing his service for a host of reasons, including, but not limited to, tuma, marital defilements, and physical blemishes. Of importance is that the Kohen is never permanently disqualified from service but is permitted to return to his normal duties once the disqualification ceases. 24 Kohanic gifts The Kohanim were compensated for their service to the nation and in the temple through the 24 Kohanic gifts. Of these 24 gifts, 10 are listed as to be given even outside the land of Israel. An example of the gifts given to the Kohen in the diaspora are most notably the five shekels of the Pidyon Haban ceremony, and the giving of the foreleg, cheeks and abomasum from each kosher slaughtered animal. Kohen and Torah instruction Torah verses and rabbinical commentary to the Tanakh imply that the Kohen has a unique leadership role amongst the nation of Israel. In addition to the well-known role of the Kohen to officiate in the sacrificial activity in the temple the, korbanot, the Kohen is presumed to have the responsibility of being knowledgeable in the laws and nuances of the Torah and to be able to give accurate instruction in those laws to the Jewish people. Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch explains this responsibility as not being the exclusive Torah instructors, but working in tandem with the rabbinic leaders of the era, while other rabbinic greats, notably the Chasim Sofer and Meharetz Shays, acknowledged a unique assignment of Torah instruction to the descendants of Aaron. <laughs> Modern application After the destruction of the Second Temple and the suspension of sacrificial offerings, the formal role of priests in sacrificial services came to an end temporarily until the rebuilding of the Temple once more. Kohanim, however, retain a formal and public ceremonial role in synagogue prayer services. Kohanim also have a limited number of other special duties and privileges in Jewish religious practice. These special roles have been maintained in Orthodox Judaism, and sometimes in Conservative Judaism. Reform Judaism does not afford any special status or recognition to Kohanim. Topic: <inaudible> Synagogue Aliyah. Every Monday, Thursday and Shabbat in Orthodox synagogues and many conservative ones as well, a portion from the Torah is read aloud in the original Hebrew in front of the congregation. On weekdays, this reading is divided into three, it is customary to call a Kohen for the first reading Aliyah, a Levite for the second reading, and a member of any other tribe of Israel to the third reading. On Shabbat, the reading is divided into seven portions, a Kohen is called for the first Aliyah and a Levite to the second, and a member of another tribe for the rest. If a Kohen is not present, it is customary in many communities for a Levite to take the first Aliyah, Bimkam Kohen in the place of a Kohen and an Israelite the second and succeeding ones. This custom is not required by Halakha Jewish law, however, and Israelites may be called up for all aliyah. The late 12th and early 13th century, Rabbi Mayer of Rothenburg ruled that, in a community consisting entirely of Kohanim, the prohibition on calling Kohanim for anything but the first two and mafter aliyah creates a deadlock situation which should be resolved by calling women to the Torah for all the intermediate aliyah. The Conservative Rabbinical Assembly's Committee on Jewish Law and Standards CJLS, consistent with the conservative movement's general view of the role of Kohanim, has ruled that the practice of calling a Kohen to the first Aliyah represents a custom rather than a law, and that accordingly, a conservative rabbi is not obligated to follow it. As such, in some conservative synagogues, this practice is not followed. <laughs> Priestly blessing. The Kohanim participating in an Orthodox and some other styles of traditional Jewish prayer service also deliver the priestly blessing, during the repetition of the Shemine Esrei. They perform this service by standing and facing the crowd in the front of the congregation, with their arms held outwards and their hands and fingers in a specific formation, with a Jewish prayer shawl or tallit covering their heads and outstretched hands so that their fingers cannot be seen. Kohanim living in Israel and many Sephardic Jews living in areas outside Israel deliver the priestly blessing daily, Ashkenazi Jews living outside Israel deliver it only on Jewish holidays. Pidyon Haban Redemption of the firstborn. 
Outside the synagogue, the Kohen leads the Pidyon Haban ceremony. This symbolic redemption of the firstborn son is based on the Torah commandment, and you shall redeem all the firstborn of man among your sons. Topic: <laughs> Effects on marital status. Orthodox Judaism recognizes the rules as being in full force. Areas where orthodox approaches may create different results include situations where a woman has been raped, kidnapped or held hostage, descendants of converts whose Judaism status turned out to be subject to doubt, ambiguous prior dating histories, and other potentially ambiguous or difficult situations. A priest of Aaron's lineage, i.e. Cohen, is forbidden by the Mosaic law, Torah, to marry a divorced woman even if she were a native Israelite. Likewise, a male descendant from Aaron's line is prohibited to marry a Jewish woman who has had intercourse with a non-Jew, whether she had been raped or she had willfully done so. So, too, he cannot marry a Jewish woman whose birth was by a father who is a Kohen but who violated one of these prohibitions. If he went ahead and did one of these three things, his male issue born from such union is no longer a priest i.e. Cohen, but rather becomes a halal lev. 21-7, a term designating one who is no longer a priest, but profane. A priest must maintain an untainted lineage, and his mother must be of Jewish birth. If he married a non-Jewish woman from the Gentile nations, his children are no longer priests, but Gentiles. Had a priest of Aaron's lineage transgressed this prohibition and married a divorced woman, and they had children together, all of his female issue, whether his, or his sons, or his grandchildren, would be prohibited from marrying into the priestly stock for all generations. Rape poses an especially poignant problem. The pain experienced by the families of Kohanim who were required to divorce their wives as the result of the rapes accompanying the capture of Jerusalem is alluded to in this Mishnah. If a woman were imprisoned by non-Jews concerning money affairs, she is permitted to her husband, but if for some capital offense, she is forbidden to her husband. If a town were overcome by besieging troops, all women of priestly stock found in it are ineligible to be married to priests or to remain married to priests, but if they had witnesses, even a slave, or even a bondswoman, these may be believed. But no man may be believed for himself. Rabbi Zechariah ben Hakitzab said. By this temple, her hand did not stir from my hand from the time the non-Jews entered Jerusalem until they went out. They said to him, No man may give evidence of himself. <inaudible> Israel The Israeli rabbinate will not perform a marriage halakhically forbidden to a Kohen. For example, a Kohen cannot legally marry a divorced or converted woman in the state of Israel, although a foreign marriage would be recognized. Topic: <laughs> Conservative Jewish view. Conservative Judaism has issued an emergency takana, rabbinical edict, temporarily suspending the application of the rules in their entirety on the grounds that the high intermarriage rate threatens the survival of Judaism and hence that any marriage between Jews is welcomed. The takana declares that the offspring of such marriages are to be regarded as kohanim. The movement allows a kohen to marry a convert or divorcee for these reasons. Since the temple in Jerusalem is no longer extant and korbanot should not be restored, kohanim are no longer able to perform temple services in a state of ritual purity. Because the intermarriage crisis among American Jewry is an extreme situation, the conservative movement feels it must support the decision of two Jews to marry. <laughs> Bat Cohen Kohen was a status that traditionally referred to men, passed from father to son, although there were situations where a bat Kohen, daughter of a Kohen, enjoyed some special status. For example, the first-born son of a bat Kohen, or the first-born son of a bat Levi the daughter of any Levite did not require the ritual of Pidyon Haban. In addition, females, although they did not serve in the tabernacle or the temple, were permitted to eat or benefit from some of the 24 Kohanic gifts. However, if a Kohen's daughter married a man from outside the Kohanic line, she was no longer permitted to benefit from the Kohanic gifts. Conversely, the daughter of a non-Kohen who married a Kohen took on the same rights as an unmarried daughter of a Kohen. <laughs> <laughs> Modern times Today, Orthodox and many conservative rabbis maintain the position that only a man can act as a Kohen, and that a daughter of a Kohen is recognized as a Bat Kohen only in those very limited ways that have been identified in the past. 
Other conservative rabbis, along with some Reform and Reconstructionist rabbis, are prepared to give equal Kohen status to the daughter of a Kohen. Orthodox Judaism maintains that the privileges and status of Kohanim stem primarily from their offerings and activities in the Temple. Accordingly, in Orthodox Judaism only men can perform the priestly blessing and receive the first aliyah during the public Torah reading, and women are generally not permitted to officiate in a pidyon haban ceremony. However, the question of what acts if any, a bat kohen can perform in an orthodox context is a subject of current discussion and debate in some orthodox circles. Some women's prayer groups that practice under the halakhic guidance of non orthodox rabbis, and which conduct Torah readings for women only, have adapted a custom of calling a bat kohen for the first aliyah and a bat levi for the second. Conservative Judaism, consistent with its view that sacrifices in the temple will not be restored and in light of many congregations' commitment to gender, but not caste egalitarianism, interprets the Talmudic relevant passages to permit elimination of most distinctions between male and female kohanim in congregations that retain traditional tribal roles while modifying traditional gender roles. The conservative movement bases this leniency on the view that the privileges of the Kohen come not from offering temple offerings but solely from lineal sanctity, and that ceremonies like the priestly blessing should evolve from their temple-based origins. The argument for women's involvement in the priestly blessing acknowledges that only male kohanim could perform this ritual in the days of the temple, but that the ceremony is no longer rooted in temple practice, its association with the temple was by rabbinic decree, and rabbis therefore have the authority to permit the practice to evolve from its temple-based roots. As a result, some conservative synagogues permit a bat kohen to perform the priestly blessing and the pidyon haban ceremony, and to receive the first aliyah during the Torah reading. The conservative Halakha Committee in Israel has ruled that women do not receive such aliyo and cannot validly perform such functions Rabbi Robert Harris, 5748. Therefore, not all conservative congregations or rabbis permit these roles for bnot kohanim daughters of priests. Moreover, many egalitarian-oriented conservative synagogues have abolished traditional tribal roles and do not perform ceremonies involving kohanim such as the priestly blessing or calling a kohen to the first aliyah, and many traditionalist conservative synagogues have retained traditional gender roles and do not permit women to perform these roles at all, because most reform and reconstructionist temples have abolished traditional tribal distinctions, roles, and identities on grounds of egalitarianism. A special status for a bat kohen has very little significance in these movements. <inaudible> Cohen genetic testing Since the Y chromosome is inherited only from one's father women have no Y chromosome, all direct male lineages share a common haplotype. Therefore, testing was done across sectors of the Jewish and non-Jewish population to see if there was any commonality among their Y chromosomes. The initial research by Hammer, Skorecki, et al., was based on a limited study of 188 subjects, which identified a narrow set of genetic markers found in slightly more than 50% of Jews with a tradition of priestly descent and approximately 5% of Jews who did not believe themselves to be Kohanim. Over the succeeding decade, Hammer, Skorecki, and other researchers continued to collect genetic material from Jewish and non Jewish populations around the world. The most recent results suggest that 46% of those who have a family tradition of priestly descent belong to the Y-DNA haplogroup identified as JP58, and that at least two-thirds of that 46% have very similar Y-DNA sequences indicating comparatively recent common ancestry. A further 14% of Kohanim were found to belong to another lineage, in haplogroup J2 a M410. In contrast, the so-called Cohen modal haplotype CMH, a characteristic Y chromosome haplotype earlier identified in a majority of men self-reporting as Kohanim, is found in as much as 5% to 8% of Jews who have no family tradition of being Kohanim, and only 1.5% were found to have the closest match to the most detailed sequence. Amongst non-Jews, the CMH can be found among non-Jewish Yemenites greater than 67.7% and Jordanians approximately 7%, but none were found to most closely match the most detailed sequence. 
Thus, studies document certain distinctions among the Y chromosomes of Kohanim, implying that a substantial proportion of Kohanim share some common male ancestry. Since the religious status of a Kohen is contingent upon being the male biological descendant of Aaron in conjunction with numerous other variables that are not subject to genetic testing, the wife of a Kohen cannot have had relations with a non Jew, be a divorcee, etc. The possession of a common haplotype does not provide sufficient evidence to confer or maintain the religious status of a Kohen. Cohen, which depends on more than simple heredity. This loss of priestly status over time may account for the 1.5% of non-Kohen Jews who very closely match the Y chromosome sequence that is most common amongst Kohanim. Topic: <laughs> Cohen and its variations as a surname. The status of Cohen in Judaism has no necessary relationship to a person's surname. Though it is true that descendants of Kohanim often bear surnames that reflect their genealogy, there are many families with the surname Kohen or any number of variations who are not Kohanim nor even Jewish. Conversely, there are many Kohanim who do not have Kohen as a surname. There are numerous variations to the spelling of the surname Kohen. These are often corrupted by translation or transliteration into or from other languages, as exemplified below not a complete list. English, Cohen, Cowan, Can, Cahan, Carne, Cone, Cone, Con, Conway, Cohan, Cohaner, Cahanman, Chaplin, Kiahan, Kaplan, Hakoan. Cohan is also an Irish surname and Conway is also a surname of Welsh origin. Cowan is often a variant of the Scottish surname Cowan. German, Cone, Cone, Cogan, Corn, Coon, Con, Can, Cane, Canel, Con, Cohen, Katz, a Hebrew abbreviation for Cohen Zedek, Ken Zedek, i.e. Righteous priest. Jackman, Jackman Cone, Jachquan, Koganman, Koganman, Cogner, Koganer, Kagan, Koner, Koner, Conman, Kahaneman, Conman. Dutch, Cohen, Kane, Cone, Con, Kogan. French, Kayan, Cohen, Con, Kahun, Chan, Kahane. Greek, Cone, Kotz, Kote, Kotadis, Kothanis, Romaniote Jews. Hungarian, Cohen, Kahan, Canel. Russian, Kogan, Kogan, Kokan, Kochan, Pop, Priest, Brevda, Kagadan, Kajidan in Hebrew, this name is spelled Kaf Shin Dalad Nun, and is an acronym for Kohane Shlushe Deshmaya Ninhu, which is Aramaic for Priests are the messengers of heaven. Kamadan, Kazdan, 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 Kogan, Kogan, Kozan, Kozer, Koganson, Kagan, Kaganovich, Kaganovsky are also possible variations of this name. Georgian, Kote, Kotadis, Kutadizi, Kutaisi. Serbian, Kone, Khan, Kojan. Polish, Khan, Kokan, Yak, Kaplan, Kaplan, Koplan. Italian, Cohen, Cohen, Proen, Sacerdote, Italian for priest, sacerdoti, sacerdoti Cohen, Rappaport and variants Spanish, Cohen, Cohen, Cone, Cana, Cano, Cano, Coy, Cano, Sao, Carina, Correa Basque, Apeztegui, priestly house, in Basque, Apes, priestly, and Tegui, house. Also Apeztegui, Apestaguia, Apestegui, Aestegui Portuguese, Sao, Cunha, Coheia, Coelho Persian, Kohan, Kayan, Kohanzad, Kohanchi, Kohani, Kohankados Turkish, Kohan Romanian, Khuzer Arabic, al Kohan, al Kayan, al Kahan, Tawil, Tabili, Tagili Ancient, Modern Hebrew, Kohan, Hakohan, Ben Kohan, Bar Kohan, Kohani, Kahana, Kohanim, Kohan Zedek, Kohan Zadik, Katz Others, Mez, Mazo, Mazer, acronym of the Hebrew phrase Mi Zera Aharon, meaning from the seed of Aaron, the Kohen priest. Azule, acronym of the Hebrew phrase Aisha Zona Vechalila Lo Yikachu, meaning a foreign non-Israelite woman or divorced Israelite woman shall not he a Kohen take. Prohibition binding on Kohanim, Kohanim contemporary Israel. Moshe Kohen is the equivalent of John Smith in English-speaking countries, i.e., proverbially the most common of names. Topic. Seder One common interpretation of the practice of having three pieces of matzah on a Seder plate is that they represent Kohen, Levi and Yisrael. 
i.e., the priests, the tribe of Levi, and all other Jewish people. Outside Judaism According to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, either literal descendants of Aaron or worthy Melchizedek priesthood holders have the legal right to constitute the presiding bishopric under the authority of the First Presidency section 68 To date, all men who have served on the presiding bishopric have been Melchizedek priesthood holders, and none have been publicly identified as descendants of Aaron. See also Mormonism and Judaism. References in popular culture The positioning of the Cohen's hands during the priestly blessing was Leonard Nimoy's inspiration for Mr. Spock's Vulcan salute in the original Star Trek television series. Nimoy, raised an Orthodox Jew but not a Cohen, used the salute when saying, Live long and prosper. The priestly blessing was used by Leonard Cohen in his farewell blessing during Whither Thou Goest, the closing song on his concerts. Leonard Cohen himself was from a Cohen family. He also used the drawing of the priestly blessing as one of his logos. Topic. Cohen and the Holocaust In 1938, with the outbreak of violence that would come to be known as Kristallnacht, American Orthodox Rabbi Menachem HaKohen Risikoff wrote about the central role he saw for priests and levites in terms of Jewish and world responses, in worship, liturgy, and teshuva, repentance. In Hiknim Wil Wim Hakahanim Velevim the priests and the Levites, he stressed that members of these groups exist in the realm between history below and redemption above, and must act in a unique way to help move others to prayer and action, and help bring an end to suffering. He wrote, Today, we also are living through a time of flood, not of water, but of blood, which burns and turns Jewish life into ruin. We are now drowning in a flood of blood. Through the Kohanim and Levi'im help will come to all Israel. Topic. See also Family history Giving of the foreleg, cheeks, and abomasum as an outside of Israel Kohanic gift Israelites Jewish view of marriage Rabbi Sayyid a similar title for descendants of Muhammad in Islam the mitzvah of sanctifying the Kohen The status quo Kohen The Torah instruction of the Kohanim Wicked priest Topic. Footnotes Topic. Bibliography Isaac Klein A Guide to Jewish Religious Practice, p. 387-388, Conservative View Prior to Takana on Cohen Marriages Isaac Klein Responsa and Halakhic Studies, p. 22-26, Conservative View Prior to Takana on Cohen Marriages K. Skorecki, S. Selig, S. Blazer, R. Bradman, N. Bradman, P. J. Waberton, M. Ismailovich, M. F. Hammer 1997, Why Chromosomes of Jewish Priests Nature 385, 32. Available online, doi, full text, HTML, full text, PDF. Proceedings of the CJLS, 1927-1970, Volume 3, United Synagogue Book Service, Conservative. Mishnayoth, Seder Nashim. Translated and annotated by Philip Blackman. Judaica Press Limited, 2000. pp. 134-135. Topic. External links Kahuna.org, the Cohen's Contemporary Online Resource Genetic Genealogy, Aaron and the Cohen Model Haplotype The Laws of Birchat Kohanim, the Priestly Blessing Chabad.org Holy Matrimony? All about the Cohen or Jewish priests' prohibitions in marriage. The Cohen-Levi Family Heritage High Priest's official apparel depicted Kohanim Center and Network Europe